Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Redstone. In this video, we're going to be starting level 4, where we will be talking about mathematical circuitry. Now, if you build redstone devices for long enough, you're eventually going to come across a situation where you'll have to deal with numbers in some shape or form. It might be something as simple as you have a redstone device that needs to do something 8 times and then stop, or it might be something as complex as you have to build this huge redstone device that draws circles for some reason, and you need to calculate how to draw a circle. So, at some point or another, you're going to have to deal with numbers. So, in this level of the series, that's all we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how to represent numbers, and how you can deal with them, and how you can do just general mathematical stuff with redstone. So, to start off with... We're just going to talk about numbers. We're going to talk about how you can represent them, how, what the most intuitive way you might think to represent them is, and why that might not be good enough in a lot of situations. And then we're going to move on to the slightly less intuitive way of representing numbers, and we'll talk about why you might want to use that, that um, way of representing numbers instead in some situations. So, let's go ahead and get started. So... Let's start with the most intuitive way of representing numbers. Now, in redstone, you can have a wire represent some concept. So, hey, why not have that concept be a number? We'll just have one wire, each one representing a different number, and if that wire's on, that means we have that number. It's a very basic principle. So right now, I have a wire for 0 through 9, and right now, as you can tell by the wire being on, we have the number 0. Now if I wanted to get the number 1, all I have to do, move over 1. And now I have 1. Want 2, there's 2, easy enough. And if I want something like 7, there's 7. So there you go. It's a very basic and very intuitive way to represent numbers. And in a lot of ways, this is a good way to do it. This means you can have literally a different thing happen for every single number you could ever possibly get. So you have a lot of control in this scenario. So, yeah. That's one of the really... That's really the big cool thing about this. Another cool thing about it is it's really easy to do basic math. If I want to just count, well, that's just moving along to the next wire. If I want to count down, that's moving along this way. Addition is incredibly easy. You're just moving over by the amount you want to add, so if I want to add 2, I move over 1, 2. Subtraction, same thing, if I want to subtract 3, I move over 3, so 1, 2, 3. And yeah, so it's a very, very simple way of doing it. But of course, there's a huge flaw with it, and you might have already realized this. So, for instance, while one of the advantages of the system might be that you have a wire for every number, and that means you can have a different thing happen for every number, and it gives you a lot of control, one disadvantage of the system is you have to have a wire for every single number. And if you want to represent any decent-sized numbers, you'll need an absolutely ridiculous amount of wires. So, this, not ideal for anything more than about 10. And even 10, I mean, look, this is 10 wires, even this is kind of ridiculous. So, yeah. Another disadvantage is you can only have one wire on at a time. That means if I have something like this, all of a sudden, even if this happens by accident, my whole device is completely ruined because I accidentally just put it in an invalid state. It's like, if you remember when we talked about RS NOR latches, and they have an invalid state when you ha try to set and reset at the same time? Yeah, same issue here. If you try sending power to more than one number at a time, you get an invalid state, and your whole device just fails. So, that's not good. And another slightly less obvious disadvantage to the system is even though, intuitively, doing math is really easy, just shift over by the number you want to add or subtract, in practice, that's really hard to do, because... How do you build a device that shifts over by some number? I mean, you can do it, but it's not that easy. So, it's a good system for things where you need a lot of control, or just you're counting, but 
This is pretty much the equivalent of trying to represent numbers with tally marks. It's, it's really big and inefficient. So there has to be a better way to do it, right? Right. And that's the other big way of representing numbers. So, let's talk about the other way of representing numbers. So how do we implement a more efficient system than this? Well, like I said, this system right here is kind of like tally marks, where you have to have pretty much a single line for every single number. And it gets really ridiculous really fast. Now, believe it or not, we've already overcome this problem using our decimal system, which, just in case you need a refresher, I've made a brief sign. So in our decimal numbering system, all we have is we have ten symbols. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Those are our ten symbols. And all we do to represent numbers is we use these symbols in varying combinations. So we'll start out at 0, that means nothing, then we just move on to the next symbol, that's 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, and every time we're just moving on to a different symbol for this number. Then 7, then 8, and then 9. And now at 9, we have a problem, because we're out of symbols. So, for 10, what do we do? Well, when we're out of symbols, all we do is we just sort of carry over. We'll put the first symbol in front of it, and then we'll start again, counting again from our, our original symbol. So, for example, when we're at 9, we get 1 and then 0. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, yada, 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 yada. That's our system of counting. So we've already overcome this problem. And hopefully it wasn't confusing to you because it's the numbering system we use and you might have trouble following these mathematical tutorials if you don't understand your own numbering system. But that's okay, you can always catch up, it's not going to be that bad. But anyways, so now, we have this more effective system. How do we implement this in Redstone? Well, if we try doing this, we have a bit of a problem, because although we have different wires, which we can use, like, different digit places, so this can be the ones place, the tens place, hundreds place, etc., we only really have two things we can represent. Either the wire doesn't have power, or the wire has power. So we only have two symbols. So how can we represent our decimal system if we only have two symbols? Well, who says we can't represent numbers using only two symbols? All we have to do is just apply the exact same rules, except instead of having ten different symbols, we only have two symbols. And thus, the concept of binary is born. So binary. It's pretty much identical to decimal, except we only have two symbols. 0 and 1. Now if we try counting like this, we start at 0, okay, we have 0. We go to 1, hey, we have a symbol for 1. We move on to 1. Alright, working out pretty good so far. Now when we're out of symbols, we carry over. So, same rules in decimal. And this is how we represent 2. Because we don't have a symbol for 2, but we just carry over. So, instead of 2 being 2, since we don't have a symbol for that, we carry over, so it's 1, 0. It's the exact same scenario as where we're trying to represent 10, even though we don't have an explicit symbol for 10. So we have 1, 0 instead of 2. It's that easy. Yeah, believe it or not, it's that simple. So let's go ahead and take a look at some binary, just to hopefully help the concept sink in a bit, because believe it or not, it is that simple. That's the only difference between binary and decimal. So here's an example of some binary. I have a bunch of wires laid out, like binary digits, and I have their decimal equivalents placed on signs, just to make it a little bit more obvious. So in binary, I start out with 0, 0, 0, 0, j just like if I would if I was counting in decimal. So I start out with 0, 0, 0, 0. If I want to have 1, I turn on 1. Hey, now I have 1. So now I want to add 1 to that. What do I do? Well. I don't have any more symbols in this, I just have this and this, so I have to carry over to the next place. So now this is 2, and our signs agree with that. Now moving on to 3, well, I can represent a symbol here, so I move on to here, and now look, there's 3. Very easy. 
Now if I go to 4, I'm out of symbols again. So, I just carry over. Just like if I was at 99 going to 100. Same concept. And again, 5. So there. Now I carry over in this place. 6. And it's just like counting. So then, I have a place here. So, 7. Now I need to carry over again. So, there. And now I'm at 8. And you notice this is completely lining up with this. So now, 9. There, carry over. 10. 11. And hopefully you get the picture. If not, play around with it a bit. It's not that hard. Now one cool thing about labeling the digits like this with all these signs is if you label them like this, you can very easily convert binary back to decimal. Because all you do is you take the decimal equivalents and then you just add them up. So this Y represents 8, this represents 2, this represents 1. So all I do is I add them up. 8 plus 2 plus 1. And that's 11. So now I'm back to the system we all know and love very easily. So binary is a great system. And as you notice, with just four wires, we can go all the way up to eight within a single wire, which means a total of 15, actually no, 16 if you include zero, different numbers we can represent with just four wires. That's pretty crazy if you consider it. And if you keep going, it just, the gains just keep increasing. If I go all the way out to the 10 wires like we had before, I, the final wire represents 512, meaning we can represent a total of 1,024 different numbers with just 10 wires using binary. That's pretty amazing, all things considered. Especially when you consider with the same amount of wires in our old system, we can only represent 0 through 10. So, we have our binary system, which is good for representing lots of numbers at once, and it's also better for doing math with, in general, since it's just simpler, and you'll see that when we actually get to talking into math. Er, yeah, talking about math, not talking into math. It's not a horn or something. Don't know what I'm thinking, but anyways. Yeah, so binary. It represents more numbers with fewer wires, and it's easier to do math with. And we also have our other system, which is called unary, which is better for counting, and it also gives you more control over what you can do with individual numbers. So yeah. These are our two mathematical systems. We'll be using binary a lot more than we use unary, but unary will still crop up every now and then. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.